welcome back to my channel. I decorated this area of my art room and I'm so happy. Before it was just a desk and blank walls and stuff all over the floor. There's still stuff all over the floor, of course, but I have to get the rest of that side of the room taken care of. And for now, I have all this done, so it's nice. I have extra shelving space for more plants and that makes me very happy. Um, today we're going to be doing a Q&A. I asked some of you on Instagram if you had any random questions and a lot of you had some really good questions and so I'm excited to get right into it and um, before I start I just want to do like a disclaimer. Some of this has medical related topics. I'm not a doctor and so make sure that you fact check with your doctor, check everything with your doctor before you make any important decisions about your health or your fertility. Just putting that out there. I am not sick, I think. I don't know if I just have allergies, but my throat's kind of scratchy and I have a little bit of cough, so I'm sorry if that gets annoying. Also, I have my handy notebook where I wrote everything down because I record on my phone. Don't have a fancy vlogging camera just yet. We will see. Um, question number one is, how long did you wait to talk to your doctor about not conceiving? Um, my case was a little bit unique because, so I was a nanny and the mom in the family, she worked at the hospital in the town that I used to live in. And she knew that I had really irregular cycles. So when I told her that my husband and I were going to start trying, she recommended that I go to the doctor just to get like a general health checkup. And I had never really had like a routine checkup as far as like women things go. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I went and I met with a nurse practitioner and she was like a little bit concerned by the irregularity of my cycle and so she was like, I don't think it would be abnormal to just refer you right to a fertility clinic. That is not normal. <laughs> um, most places make you wait until a year because you're not considered to have infertility until you've been trying for at least a year unless you're over 35 and then if you have been trying, if you're over 35 and have been trying for six months, then they refer you to a fertility clinic. So I got referred like almost right after we decided to start trying and then I waited like six months, I think it was five months, till we actually decided to go to the fertility clinic. So I would recommend waiting about a year because your chances of conceiving go up a lot after you've been trying for six months. Um, unless you know you already know that you have an issue with your cycle or like PCOS or something like that then I don't think that it would be unreasonable to approach a doctor and ask for assistance. Also I just wanted to put this random fact out there that one in four couples who have infertility actually have unexplained infertility meaning that there's no diagnosis like PCOS, endometriosis or like bad sperm or anything like that um, contributing. It's just a giant mystery. So if you are planning on going to a fertility clinic, just be wary of that, that sometimes there are no answers and that really sucks, but that's just the reality of the situation, unfortunately. Um, two, do infertility treatments make you sick? I have never had infertility treatments. Um, I have done infertility testing, but my husband and I stopped just before we finished all of our testing really um we're thinking about picking it back up again maybe at the end of this year there are just a couple things that we're like waiting to see how they pan out before we do um because fertility testing and treatments are very expensive but to answer your question i do know of people who have done fertility treatments and yes they can make you sick they can make you very uncomfortable um they affect your hormones it's just not the most fun thing to do but it's worth it once you get your baby so yeah somebody else asked have I tried holistic or natural approaches for my infertility um yes to an extent I have done a lot of research on my like issues with my cycle and my symptoms and all of that I have taken vitamins like Vitex, I have taken evening primrose oil, 
um, for a while I was really focused on my diet and I think that was actually helping a little bit but right now we're just kind of like in this place where we're going with the flow we have a lot of other things going on so I'm trying to like focus on that not stress out too much about like all of that stuff and just you know if it happens naturally and we get lucky then that would be amazing but um, my plan is to try something called the fertility diet once we decide, or like right before we decide to go to the fertility clinic probably. Um, it takes, I think it takes like three months for your eggs to fully mature when you are making them. But it takes like three months for your eggs to finish maturing. So I figure um, I'll try for like three months to basically get my body in healthier conditions and then go to a fertility clinic and maybe in the meantime I'll get lucky and get pregnant. I don't know. We will see. E, this question. How do you cope with a negative result? I'm finding it so heart-wrenching. You who asked this question, I know you, I love you. I'm sorry you're going through this too. Um, <sighs> that's a hard question because I mean, I guess there are ways to cope with it, but it's just different for everybody. Um, sorry, I need to put my pen down or I'm gonna keep clicking it, but it's obnoxious. <laughs> so it's kind of a tough question because it's a little bit different for everybody, but you're asking about me specifically. And honestly, in the beginning, it was a lot harder for me um, because it got to a point where like I was just so in tune with my symptoms that I could tell pretty soon after I ovulated that I wasn't pregnant when my period comes. It's generally kind of emotional the first day. I want to say I like cry a little bit for like the first day, just like have a moment where I'm kind of sad about it or feel like it's unfair. Um, it is heart wrenching though. It's, it's really hard. It's not something that a lot of people understand. This might sound a little weird, but think about the good things that you have that maybe a baby might change. <laughs> like, you know, I can take 30 minutes to do my makeup. I can, you know, leave somewhere on a whim without having to worry about it. it it's kind of, it, it might help, it might not, because at the end of the day, you would gladly sacrifice all of those things to have a baby, um, but, I'm just trying to cherish the time that I have with just me and my husband and my dog. And while I cherish that time, just also really hope that our time to become parents is sooner rather than later. When I had my false positive pregnancy test, that really affected me. Um, I'll link the video below, but that really affected me and kind of made this cycle harder. Like I've been struggling a little bit since then more than I was before. So that's been kind of rough, but I don't know. I don't know if that really answered your question. One thing I want to add is that find yourself some support. Find somebody that you can talk to. Um, I know a lot of people don't really get it, and sometimes it's hard to even talk to the people closest to us about it, but if you have to join a group online, um, find someone online, like just talk about it because often enough, like they need somebody to talk to about it too, and like. I've made a really great friend just from doing that. For friends struggling with infertility, is it better to just support in prayer or check in? I love this question so much. Um, always, always, always support in prayer. I think that that is so encouraging to know that somebody's praying for you while you're on this journey. Like, it just means the world to me because sometimes I forget to pray for myself while I'm on this journey and that's something that I really need to work on. So like knowing that I have other people that are being prayer warriors for me, it means the world. Um, as far as the other part of the question goes about checking in, if your friend has opened up to you about their infertility, I think it's safe to say that you should check in. Um, one of the most hurtful things for somebody going through infertility is when somebody avoids talking about it um, or acts as if it's not a big deal. And often infertility is really isolating so if somebody trusts you enough to open up about it I really encourage you to just you know listen and 
definitely check in. Try to avoid saying anything that's like, sounds like it might be helpful, but it's really not if you really think about it, you know? I'll, I'm probably gonna do a whole video on how to address this situation if you're a friend that, who knows somebody going through infertility because it is a little bit hard to navigate. Let your friend know that you're there and that you're willing to talk about it with them because you know they already feel so alone going through this thing that not very many people it's likely that they don't know very many people going through it i mean yeah why is the pineapple the national symbol for infertility i wrote some stuff down because i needed to google this okay so the pineapple is a symbol for strength, love, and support. So a lot of, there was like something that happened with a famous person wearing a pineapple pin in support for infertility. Um, and then other people were getting pineapple pins to like share their support as well. And then also um, pineapple, there's like an enzyme in pineapple that can act as a natural blood thinner. And I guess blood thinners are good when you're trying to conceive because it helps drive blood to your uterus, helps with implantation, and can potentially help prevent a miscarriage. I actually had someone message me about this and tell me that where they're from, um, it said that pineapple can cause a miscarriage. I have never heard of that before, so if that's something that like is said where you're from, I would Google it and just like fact check because it might be the opposite. Last question, can birth control make you infertile? The short answer is no. Um, if your pill is working the way that it was intended, obviously with medication, sometimes you don't really know what you're getting, but for the most part, like you should be totally fine coming off of birth control and starting your fertility journey, like, or not fertility journey, but starting trying to conceive. Um, I will say that birth control can prolong the process for you. Um, some people have trouble getting their periods back after they start their pill but or stop their pill but once you do generally it's not like i'm pretty sure you generally get like back to normal after your period finally comes like for me i had my first cycle after my pill was 108 days long which was driving me insane because i just wanted to start making babies you know like what and then the next one was 57 days and then the next one was 88 days. So like those were my three longest cycles and I averaged between 39 and 49 day cycles. Um, so yeah, it did take me some time. I did have to take Provera to like make my period start. Um, but I would say as far as the pill goes, that's probably the most you would have to worry about. I would just get off the pill and if for some reason your period doesn't come and you are not pregnant, then I would you know, know that that's pretty normal. And if your period takes too long, just go to a doctor. We'll give you Provera, it will help you start your period and you will be good to go. If you have any other questions or something you wanna add, um, it would be really supportive if you could like drop a comment below, like the video, subscribe. Um, I'm really loving talking about this. It's not fun to go through, but supporting other people going through it is fun. Um, just because it's not something that's talked about very much. I know how it feels to feel so alone through it and I want to help minimize that feeling for other people. So I hope that this maybe helped you or encouraged you in some way and um, stay tuned for my next video. My goal is to do one every Friday. Don't hold me to that too strictly because I have a lot of like life changes going on right now, but that's my goal. We will see if I follow through on that. So that's it for this video. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for a video, something that you want to see or hear that is related to infertility, let me know. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and following along and supporting me. I really, 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 truly appreciate it. Bye.